Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. This is the morning market review. It's Monday, it's the 14th of August. My name is Russell Shaw. I'm a senior market specialist at FXM. I want to welcome you all. Please take a look at my email address. If anyone needs to contact me, uh, just send an email to rshaw at fxm.com. Just going to go ahead and bring up our high risk investment warning. I'll keep this on screen for a few moments. Hey Raj, good morning to you. Kim, good morning to you. Thank you for everyone signing in this morning. It is much appreciated. I did get a request uh, last week just to run through the settings on my layout. So I'll just do that and then we'll get into some of the analysis. Uh, Going to bring up our market commentaries disclaimer. And for our references, market scope and trading view, let's just uh, go through to market scope first. Um, all right, I'll just run through some of the settings on uh, the charts. Uh, the RSI that I tend to use, slightly different to default settings. I use a 10, number of periods 10, and I use the, calcula it's calculated off of the median. Okay, not, not off of the close. And then for, Overbought and oversold, I'll use 80 and 20. Uh, in terms of the daily chart, the RSI is exactly the same. Okay, it's that 10 calculated on the median. Uh, these are Bollinger Bands. The red Bollinger Band is your standard Bollinger, 20, standard deviation, 2. And then just take the uh, simple moving average out. And then the blue is 20, number of periods 20, and the standard deviation is 0.75. Right, and then again, just take out the, uh, the moving average. Uh, in terms of the hourly chart, uh, this is a, this green here is a five hour exponential moving average. The orange is a 10 hour exponential moving average. The stochastic settings that I use is 1555. Okay. And just to let you know, I will put this video up on our YouTube channel so you can go through and watch it again if you just want to go through the settings. Uh, nothing there. This is a uh, just a MACD histogram. We, we don't really use it. Um, and uh, this weekly setting um, is just again it's the um, five period exponential moving average that's that green moving average the 10 period moving average is the orange and the rsi is the standard that we've discussed okay so that's that's the settings. Mm, let's just go through the uh, US dollar. There has uh, been a change up in the US dollar um, that we need to just uh, keep on top of. Uh, okay, let's do a top-down analysis. So we'll start with the we'll start with the monthly chart. Go through to the monthly. Hey, Katie. Uh, Katie asking, do I use volume? Uh, if I do use volume, if I do, it will be uh, the unbalanced volume indicator on the daily chart. Um, I'll tend to use it more for uh, exchange traded funds, ETFs. Um, so we don't use it all that often, KD. All right. Um, just want to show you what's happening here. Now, what we do have is a very this is a monthly chart so we're looking now right as a bird's eye view of the US dollar and it's been moving sideways uh, for um, a fair amount of time um, 
And what's happening now, what I think we've got to keep, it does look as if there is some US dollar strength that's starting to seep in. How, uh, how strong is it? We're going to have to wait and see, but uh, it does look as if we're getting some US dollar strength. You can see if I zoom in, there's two things um, on the price chart. The first thing is that the EMAs are starting to diverge. Okay, so the five, the five period EMA is starting to pull away from the 10 period EMA. Uh, this is on the monthly. Um, we just want to see if it does develop angle and separation because it's going to have all sorts of implications if it does. And then the second is this reference candle reversal. So you can see here is the reference candle. Um, sorry, I want to use a different arrow. Here is the reference candle, which is July's uh, reference candle. The greenback sold down during the month of July until it hit the low in the month of July. At the low, that's where the uh, dollar bears lose control and then the dollar bulls push it back up. And then there's follow through for August. There's follow through for August. Now, we've got about another two weeks or so left in terms of uh, trading days for August. But now we've got to see if it's going to close uh, higher than last month's high. So we've got two out of three conditions. We've got uh, Condition one, which is the lowest low in at least three candles. We've got condition two, where the candle, the uh, candle on the right, has taken out the reference candles high. But we really need condition three. Condition three is everything. Condition three would be if the um, candle to the right actually closes above the reference candle. So we'll only know that in about two weeks. But it has. Uh, there is some strength that's starting to seep in. And again, if you take a look at the RSI, the RSI is now starting to pull away from 50 as this seems to be some sort of momentum build. Okay. Now, if we go down to the weekly chart on the, uh, on the US dollar, things become a little clearer. So I'm going to just go down to the weekly chart here. And it's a pity that this is the way the um, the chart has developed because it puts us in a very difficult position as traders. It's much easier to trade trends than it is to trade trading ranges. And we've gone back into a weekly trading range until proven otherwise. And the way that we determine that is through peak and trough analysis. So I'm going to put in my reference peak over here. Okay. And I'm going to put in my reference trough over here. And once we've got that, we can see this is a lower peak. And we can see this is the lower trough. So we've got a downtrend until this point on the uh, greenback, except this is where the bears lose control. That's what we saw on the monthly chart. The bears lose control, and then the bulls now have pushed the greenback price up to the point where it's taken out this peak. We actually don't have another lower peak in the series. We've got a higher peak. So this higher peak now has effectively ended the downtrend um, for the greenback on a weekly basis. And the reason that it's ended the trend on a weekly basis is because there's a very specific definition of trend. And um, a downtrend is a lower peak followed by a lower trough or a series of lower peaks followed by lower troughs. We don't have that anymore. We've now got the higher peak. We don't have an uptrend. We don't have an uptrend on the weekly either. A weekly also has a very specific definition. It would be a higher trough followed by a higher peak. We don't have the higher trough. We've only got the higher peak. So if we had to see something like this, that would put the green back into, into an uptrend. Um, and that would be very interesting because it would change the um, it would change the fundamental analysis, uh, a big, it would change the technical analysis and we'd have to uh, find out um, what sort of fundamentals are driving the, the dollar. The narrative has effectively changed. And if we take a look at 
uh, tradingview.com. Uh, well, something that we can take a look at is, um, well, first of all, uh, this is a real rate. This over here is the real rate. So this would be the US 10 year minus the 10 year break even. It's the real rate. I just want to make this into a, a solid line. Uh, that's moving up. Okay. Um, if you have to take a look at the oil price, which we spoke about on Friday, that's starting to move up. So the real yields are moving up. Oil prices are moving up, which suggests perhaps an inflation dynamic coming back into play. Uh, and it looks as if the dollar is responding to that. Okay. There's the dollar. So that seems to be what, what's happening at the moment. Um, we've got to keep an eye on that oil price um, because it does have a correlation with the headline inflation rate. Uh, what we suggested on Friday is that because oil prices are starting to move up, uh, the low hanging fruit has effectively been picked. I think that the Fed may have a harder job, and, um, a fight on its hands, just to get the last sort of, um, the last 3% uh, down to 2%, that last one percentage point is probably gonna be a lot more difficult than the first uh, few percentage points that are tackled. And I think that's what the dollar is telling us here, that there is um, a potential fight on our hands. Now, that makes, life a little bit more complicated for us because we don't have the trend so to speak in fact uh, what we have here is the weekly rsr popping up above 50 and um, again that's not first price for us let's go down and see how the euro is behaving given the fact that the us dollar is no longer trending so let's just go through through down to the euro the euro perhaps showing a, uh, some resilience. So we'll take a look here. And what we do have, what we do have, I beg your pardon, is um, um, an uptrend on the daily. We do have the higher tr trough followed by the higher peak. So there is an uptrend uh, on the euro. Uh, the question that I wonder is, can it last? If the if the greenback is not trending down, then the euro US dollar pairing. Now watch this very carefully. Okay, when we're talking about a currency pair, there's uh, two parts to it. There's the numerator, so here would be the euro, and there's the denominator, and the denominator for the euro US dollar pair is the greenback. So now the greenback has stopped trending. The greenback has stopped trending. Uh, that means that means that all of the, uh, let me put that back in, I deleted the watermark accidentally, I beg your pardon. Let me put that back in. I beg your pardon. All right, so we've got the US dollar as the denominator over there, and we've got the euro over there. If the US dollar has stopped trending, then all the, all the uh, movement has to come from the numerator side. That has to come, so it comes from the analysis of the euro, as opposed to sort of a dual force type of movement that comes down to just a singular force. and what we're trying to look at here is, well, does the euro then give us a higher trough here? And that's still an outstanding question. What we need to do is see if we get a, um, a reference candle reversal here. We don't okay, have the benefit of the downtrend of the US dollar anymore. That makes life a little bit more difficult for us. If we go to the monthly chart, okay, um, Let's delete all these and let's just come up with some sort of hypothesis for the uh, for the monthly.
Let's take this rectangle out as well. Sorry, this, these two arrows can come out and that last ellipse can come out. Now take a look what's happening here on, uh, it, is, it is an uptrend in terms of our trend following indicators. It's got a, um, the five month exponential moving average, that's this green one on top of the orange 10 month exponential moving average. Uh, there is separation. There is separation between the two EMAs. But what's happening is we're losing some of that angle. Okay, we're losing some of that angle. And the Euro RSR starting to uh, dip. It's coming back towards 50. So some momentum has been lost on the Euro side of things. Now, take a look at last week's, uh, I beg your pardon, last month's candle over here. That's quite an interesting candle on the on the euro, in that it's a um, an inverse uh, hammer. Um, it's effectively a candlestick which shows the euro was um, demanded all the way up until about 112.70. At 112.70, the euro bulls lose control, the bears take over, and now we've got a red candle for this month. Remember, we're two we're two weeks into into August, and uh, it looks as if the bulls just hadn't quite fought back and taken that control over. Well, that's interesting, given that the dollar has stopped trending and the dollar potentially stopped trending because we're seeing higher real yields and because we started to see uh, potential inflation pressures coming because of the energy uh, sector. Um, and that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Once we lose the trend on the greenback, it makes life a little bit more difficult for us as traders. Uh, let's take a look at uh, cable and then uh, let's just take a look at gold to end off. I'll take a uh, look at cable. Okay, just bringing that up, a bit, uh, begging your pardon. We've just gone nine o'clock, so the cash market's just open, so there's a little bit of a delay here. Okay. Um, Here again, we've got two parts to this equation, don't we? We've got the numerator, which is sterling, and then we've got the US dollar. Remember, the US dollar now has stopped trending, so we lose the power of the, of the denominator. If we lose the power of the denominator, it's all about uh, the pound. Here's the line in the sand. If we dip below that, we lose the pounds uptrend. Okay, let me just put this watermark in again. I'm begging your pardon. All right. And uh, let's just go through to the monthly chart here. And on the monthly chart here, uh, we do have uh, cable in uptrend. We've got the, um, we've got the five um, the five months green exponential moving, uh, exponential moving average on top of the orange 10 month exponential moving average, but perhaps losing some momentum here as well. You can see that this RSR sort of dipping back to, towards 50, and we've got the exact same uh, shaped candle as we have on the euro, whereas um, the bulls took it all the way up till about 131.40. That's where they lose control. Guess what happens then? The bears take over, and it looks as if just the bears are holding uh, court at the moment. So, uh, just uh, it's become a little bit more staccato, a little bit more stop start. Why we've lost the dollar trend? Okay, why have we lost the dollar trend? Let's keep an eye on those real yields, keep an eye on the uh, energy prices. Perhaps if those show some sort of moderation, we can get uh, the uh, forex pairs moving smoothly again. Just one more chart and then we'll call it a morning and that would be the gold chart. Gold tends to move contra to the dollar. Remember the dollar now has stopped trending. What is the what is the uh, gold chart? And what I want to do is I want to restart this labeling. I want to restart this labeling. You know what we can do is we just um, go through to the chart elements. Let's take out 
these elements here and let's restart the labeling because it does indicate something. I think what we can do is we could put in a reference P here. And I think if we put in the reference trough here, I think that gives us a fairly good working space because we could put in the, the lower peak here. So you can see some weakness. And then what we can do is we can keep an eye on this trough over here and see if gold actually dips below this trough. And if it dips below that trough, then we've got a lower peak followed by a lower trough. Then we've got a downtrend all of a sudden on gold, which would be a complete change up in terms of the technical analysis. You can see that the RSI here has dipped below 50 as well. The longer it maintains below 50, the more downwards pressure is going to be um, um, imposed on the precious metal. So we'll keep an eye on that. All right, let me just see if there's any questions that have come through. Hey, Indrin, good morning to you. Uh, can we still do intraday trading? Uh, of course you can still do intraday trading, Kim, as long as it follows your trading plan. You can't willy-nilly um, just put on any trades. You've got to follow a trading plan. As long as, as, long as your rules that have been tested um, have been met on your trading plan, of course. But just bear in mind, if there is some sort of rule that has now been compromised, well, then it's all about uh, being patient. So it really comes down to your trading plan and uh, if there's any uh, contraventions of the rules on your trading plan. Are there any other questions there? All right. Let's wrap up here then, guys. I want to wish everyone a good day, a good evening ahead, and we shall chat again tomorrow morning. Thanks very much, guys.